All right, we'll talk about the difference between laws and theories. A law tells you what happens, and a theory explains why. For example, if I am holding a board marker or a piece of chalk and I drop it, it will fall to the ground. No exceptions. We always observe this uh, unless there's magic going on. It always falls to the ground. That tells you what is happening. Now we want to know why. So if we talk about what is happening, we're talking about the law of gravity. This is based on an observation. It happens every single time, no exceptions. Um, and so this is why we call it a law. Rarely do we get the laws wrong because we observe and observe and observe that it always happens. If we want to talk about why does that chalk or marker fall to the ground, then we're talking about the theory. A theory is based on many things, observations, measurements, experiments, repeated experiments, and basically we come up with a guess. Lots of really smart people, um, experts in the field, spend lots of time thinking about what's going on and devise the reason why. So a law tells you what happens, a theory tells you why it happens. In order to talk about the differences between laws and theories, let's look at or review some of the things that we've already talked about to use as examples. For example, matter is anything that has a mass or occupies space, so it has a volume. Uh, recall that mass and weight are not the same thing, but they are the same on this planet. So what does matter do? What is what we're looking for for a law? And so let's talk about the laws that govern matter. Um, let me remind you that there are different types of matter based on their chemical and physical properties. We can put them in two different uh, categories depending on their chemical and physical properties, specifically their chemical properties. And as we look at the types of matter, let me remind you there are pure substances and mixtures. Pure substances cannot be broken down into simpler substances by physical means. Mixtures can. Mixtures have more than one pure substance present that can be separated by physical means. Let's focus in on pure substances, which are made up of matter, and talk about what, what happens with them. Remember that a law tells you what and a theory tells you why. Based on our observations of matter, of pure substances, we see a definite composition in pure substances. We see variable compositions in mixtures, but definite compositions in pure substances. So let's talk about those definite compositions. Uh, every single time we find an example of a particular pure substance, it has exactly the same composition. All right. Let's look at an example. Let's let's look at that definite composition and 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 uh, give an example of it. Let's say you have a white crystalline substance found in several geographical locations. Um, this white crystalline substance that you find in these different geographical locations have the same chemical and physical characteristics. So let's call it salt. All right. This this uh, substance can be broken down into the elements of sodium and chlorine. And what we find in every single sample that we've identified as this compound, as our salt, every single compound, or every single, single sample of it will have approximately 23 grams of sodium for every 35.5 grams of chlorine. Those numbers seem kind of strange, so let's look at it as a ratio. Our chlorine to sodium ratio would be 1.5 every single time that we found a sample of this particular compound that had the same characteristics. This is known as the law of definite proportions. What it tells us is that the proportion of elements in a compound will be some definite value. It tells us what we see happening. It does not try to explain why. It simply tells us what. So for example, if we have a, oh, to look at another example, if we have a 50 gram sample of salt 
and we decompose it into the sodium and the chlorine that it's made up of, what we would observe, what our observations would be, is that we would get about 20 grams of sodium and about 30 grams of chlorine for that particular sample. You will notice that we started, let's fix our sig figs, let's say two sig figs. We started with 50 gram sample and we ended up with 50 grams once the two substances were separated. This is known as the law of conservation of mass or the law of conservation of matter. It explains what happens, not why.